Alright, yeah, I'm working on this uh, overhead valve Briggs that uh, me and Mike built and uh, uh, we're getting down to the real nitty gritty now. Uh, there's a few finishing touches I, I want to do to it. Mike will be here tomorrow and uh, hopefully we'll start it. But uh, last time we were here we installed the carburetor, you know, and uh, that's all done. But uh, I, I, I still want to take off these little ears, you know, because we don't need them. And uh, we had the problem here with the, the breather. I think I'll come up with another solution for that. I looked in our stock and I, I had this oiler. And uh, it's, it's bigger than the one that was there, but it, it'll, it'll suit this machine. It'll fit good. Because uh, if you look here, here's a model, uh, 1921 Model F. And they actually had an oiler on there. And... Uh, this one is, is a little smaller than that one, so it'll look good. Yeah, this was all tarnished up. Worse than that. I mean, tarnished real bad, so I spent a, about an hour cleaning it up. And I used uh, Brasso, you know, the old Brasso, you know, the real stuff, not the new stuff you buy. And uh, it was so bad that I was having trouble rubbing it. So I uh, took a tip from my buddy 357 Magdad, who's uh, one of the tool restorers, and... He always uses a Dremel with a, with a buffing wheel whenever he polishes anything. And I tried that and it came out great. So, uh, thanks to him. And uh, also, uh, I want to put the muffler on. I got the, we got the muffler. And uh, I bought some fittings. Here's a 45 and then a little nipple. And I want to put that on. I also want to change this board. Uh, make it longer. So I can mount. Well, not that, that board is just temporary. We're going to make a, a little, a little mount for this and everything. But uh, for now, I want to uh, get an extra long board here and uh, mount the gas tank. And I'll let, I'll let Mike uh, plumb it because uh, he always does good with that stuff. And uh, what else we got to do to this? Uh, well, that's about it. You know. Oh yeah, I got to make an air filter. Uh, you know what? I ran into trouble with that. Here's here's what a, a regular air filter is off of like a 5S, you know, the acorns. And that's just, that's too big for that. It's almost the size of the head. So we have to find something. We have to actually make something. So I was trying to find uh, something to make and I had trouble, you know. I, I was going to get like a, a can this size, you know. Which uh, which would work? That's about the right size. And I came across something that, that would look real good on there. You know, I wanted something that flared out on the bottom, and that's, that's what this does. But this is this is Mike's favorite oil can, and I hate to use that. You know, you turn that upside down, that'll fit on there real nice, and it'll look good. And put a little top on there. Let me see if I can find a top. All right. I found a little top for it here, a little concave, convex uh, piece of metal. Looks like the bottom of a, a spray can or something, but uh, that'll actually look good on here. I have to cut this thing down. I have to cut that down maybe uh, about an inch or so to make it look good, you know, squatty, but uh, I think that would look good on there. Paint it the same color blue as the engine, or maybe silver, I don't know. Got a lot of silver going on though, but you can actually see. How much smaller it is. Where's my chair? Where's my chair? Here we go. You see how much smaller it is to the, to the regular uh, carburetor hat. Yeah, these originally, I don't think they had any uh, carburetor hats on them, air filters, but uh, that's what we're thinking. I hate to, I hate to use that, though, because uh, I've had that my whole life, that the oil can. Okay. All right, enough talking. Let's, uh, let's take this carburetor off and cut them ears off for now. Alright, I got this one over here. Here we go, focus in. Uh, got this one over here pretty much cut off. I just got to grab it now with uh, the pliers. Here we go. I do have to do, still do a little trimming back here, but uh, for the most part it came off. I thought it was going to be easy. I thought that would cut right through that stuff, but it didn't. What I was using was my, uh, my Dremel here. And I started out 
with these real thin ones, you know. I figure the thinner the better. We cut right through there, and uh, uh, it was it was cutting it was cutting fine until it uh, busted off and hit me in the nose. So I had to uh, go with these uh, these here reinforced fiberglass ones, and they uh, they held together, but uh, they they burn up pretty fast. But uh, good thing I have my safety glasses on, because if that would have hit me in the eye, forget about it. And the funny thing is, you know, I had my safety glasses on, and uh, I should have had my shield. I had a, I have a face shield, and it was sitting five foot away from me. And it was that wasn't wasn't tucked away or nothing because I was using it because uh, I was working on my truck, grinding on my truck. So, uh, you know, you guys got you got to take safety seriously. And this, this is a nice one, and they're not that expensive. This is a, a Uvex, I think it's a Bionic, Uvex Bionic. And they're only, this is only 24 dollars, and I probably had that about five years already. And the glass is, the plastic is still crystal clear. You know, don't waste your money on that Harbor Freight stuff. I've had them. This goes around, goes around your whole face from ear to ear. Goes all down below your chin and uh, halfway over your head, so. Yeah, don't play with safety. Buy uh, buy good stuff when it comes to that. I'll leave a, I'll leave a description uh, for you guys on this and a, a link a link in the description there. So, uh, all right, I do have to uh, trim this up a little, and I'm going to cut this side off. So uh, let me get to that without uh, busting my nose up too bad. See how this uh, wheeler looks on here. I had to uh, round off the edges here. Let me turn you so I can see you. Oop, sorry about that. Here you go. Yeah, I had to round the edges off here because it was hitting the block. And now I just got enough, just enough clearance. Not the block, the cylinder head, the cylinder walls. All right, I got enough just to to spin it. Okay. 
Forget this just for looks now. Alright. Yeah, it's not too big. I got a small spark plug I could put in there, but I think it'll be okay. It won't be in a way or anything. Alright. Let's put the the exhaust on, see what that looks like. Let me get it. Alright, let's see what this looks like. Put the elbow in. There we go. Tough to figure out how that pipe goes in because uh, Mike had to have that coming out at a certain angle, and you know, you, you assume you're going like this, but you don't, you're going on a different angle. Is there a little flying saucer? Somebody called that a flying saucer. And I must say, it does look like one. Alright, here we go. And I think we put it at a little bit of a 45 there, sticking out that way. I think it'll look just fine. Alright. Alright, I'm liking what I see. Alright, so all we have to do is uh, wait for Mike and... Uh, He'll hook the fuel line up. I don't know what he usually puts uh, loops in it. I don't know. I don't know how he's gonna. I don't know how he's gonna loop this, but uh, he'll figure it out. He always though. It always looks good when he gets done. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow, and uh, we should have it running. All right. It's the next day, and it's uh, engine night day. Yep. Cause Mike Mike started really early, so he got done early. It's uh, right now. It's. Uh, it's only about 2.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so we've got a couple of hours. But uh, he's getting ready. He's putting the wheel in there. All right, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, we should get it running tonight. And uh, he's got to put the carburetor apart. And he was just saying he's got to, got to solder solder something back on the carburetor. Yeah, the butterfly. The, the choke butterfly on the, yeah. on the choke shaft. <clears throat> and then uh, once we do that, we can put the throttle slide in. And uh, what else? Uh, fill it with oil. We're about to do that now. And just hook, hook up with both gasoline. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we should uh, be going. We should be good to go. All right. We get a little far. You know, and the little dirt bike's on his way over. Oh, all right. I like to have him over because everybody had a hand in this engine. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out what he had a hand in because I know he had something there. But he's the one that uh, did the. He he welded the crank together. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. We'll get back to you guys when we get something going. All right. All right. Mike is trying to. There you go. He just just did it. He's trying to solder the butterfly back in place. Ah, eh. uh, it hardened up. Hardened up. Hang on. Yeah, because right now that's should be closed, so it's it's just slightly open. So I gotta wet it again. Yeah, there it goes. Yep. Yep. So when we let it cool and make sure that the right we didn't get it in the joint, right? Huh. So. There was it, there was just enough solder left on the two parts that I couldn't slide the shaft through the butterfly, so I, I kind of got it all lined up and then melted the blob and it slipped right through. So stay in there. Yeah. And nah, not just quite. Moved. Not yeah. quite. Looks like I got to put a little blob on it. Okay. Actually, you know what? Maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll put a little blob of flux in there and mm -hmm. just take a piece of solder and just cut a little piece and set a little pellet in there right and see if it'll flow in oh, i'm sure it will all right all right let me get one all right it looks like we got it just had to add a little uh, blob of solder yeah might put a little wet diaper on there so it wouldn't uh, the heat wouldn't travel into our our epoxy uh fitting there so uh, okay so now we got a carburetor i just got to hook up some fuel lines fuel and ignition all right Let's go. All right, Mike's working on a gas line here. He's got the ferrule in there. And uh, yeah. what were you thinking of, Mike? Well, I know you always make loops and stuff. And yeah, I think it just come out of here with a you know a fairly tight 90. Come over to the engine and just maybe have one loop here come up and then have a like an S come out and right into here. Uh, that's good. So yeah, this might only be temporary anyway because. It will, 
I don't know if we're going to keep this straight or sideways, but mm -hmm. I think I think it'll be okay. Maybe we'll be permanent. Yeah, I mean, just as long as it's in this approximate area, we'll be right. all right, I think. So if we do anything, we'll just turn that sideways, and that'll only only bring it in a half an inch or so. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Whatever. We'll figure it out. But uh, for now, that should look good. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We're getting there. Mike just he hooked up the the fuel line, and that looks pretty good. Little, little, looks pretty decent. Thank Actually, it looks good. Doesn't look decent. Oh, looks good. Thank you. Yeah. And look who showed up. Hey, Tibbs. I'm glad he was able to make it because uh, I like to have these guys start, uh, around when we start this for the first time because they're all part of it. Couldn't do it without them. So uh, Mike's just hooking up the ignition. And uh, I'll have to get you a couple of wires for the spark plugs. and. Yeah, just, just some jumpers for now. You know? Okay. All right. So uh, we're uh, closing in on it. Daddy Dirt Bike showed up too, but he just went to the hardware store. All right, we'll get back to you when it's ready to go. It's almost ready to go. Yeah. All right, we've got the ignition set up. Mike's setting the timing. The ignition's just temporary. He's looking for top dead. It's the hair before right now, so. Oh, look at that. It's a good spot. Yeah, I smell the ozone. Hmm. Huh, okay. Yeah, so that's set. And we got to put this flywheel back on. Okay. Yeah, we're getting close. Look at this, Mike. The, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Hey, man, somebody's got to do the research. <laughs> somebody's got to take over for him. That's right. He's, he's out. He's out getting something to the hardware store. All right. We had our little uh, engine running here already. And uh, Mike had to do a few uh, fine, a little bit of fine tuning, but it was running good. A little bit of ignition yeah. adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, the cam I built for the lobe there was uh, I had everything adjusted a little too tight, and it was uh, it was holding the spark too long. Yeah, we so had a was... real long ignition event, and we we're actually we we're actually backfiring out the intake because this this engine we have a spark like, an ignition event every revolu uh, every revolution. So on the the non-compression top dead center at the valve overlap point, the ignition was still going as the intake valve was opening, so we were getting it flashed back into the carburetor. Right. So we shortened the ignition event and advanced the timing a little bit, and that seemed to correct. It seemed to be okay. It seemed to work yeah. good, but it, but it ran great. Yeah, it was running real you well. Know? And everything is lubing itself up good. Even, even uh, the push rods are, are giving themselves a little lubrication down there. Mm -hmm. And we only gave them a drip of wheel up here, and that's fine. Yeah, the clearance is yeah, it's pretty good still. Right. So I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a little bit of gas <clears> to start. You know what, Bill? Grab that engine on the floor there. Can you bring that over? This one? Yeah. I want to show these guys exactly what this thing started as. Oh, okay. Right here, buddy. Yeah, if you guys remember, it started out as a, a, a Briggs 5S here. So, man, that's how much modifications we did to that. You know, we took the, the cylinders and, and made the cylinder round because they used to be... Uh, triangular or sort and Mike made the head mm -hmm. and we had to make the that the rockers pedestal, everything yeah. yep. so so this thing is the only thing pretty much left of the Briggs engine is the piston and the block mm -hmm. so uh, yeah the piston and the connecting rod are unmodified pretty much everything else is, has been modified right <laughs> so it's been a long time it's been two years since we started but we've only worked on it maybe yeah. you know once every two three months if we're lucky but uh it's good. It runs good and everything, and uh, that's it. That's what it started as. So, uh, go ahead, Daddy. Can you grab it? Daddy dirt bike showed up. So uh, the whole gang is here, and that's how I like it. So uh, let's go, Michael. See, see what it does. Like I said, I'm gonna uh, give it a little drop of gasoline because just it, it's got to pull fuel up a long way. So right. That's it. It doesn't look it, but that's uh, it's about two foot of line. Yeah, just a little, just little a, bit of just assistance a drop helps. Yeah, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, he'll be playing around with this and everything because uh, the throttle doesn't have a you know a, the, a way to hold it open. It usually has a spring and stuff. Yeah, this is just a test here. Right. So we still have a lot of work to do to it, but uh, almost. Almost.
There we it go. Doesn't quite like to idle yet. We, mm -hmm. This this show how the, the throttle works, Mike. Well, the throttle it, it's actually if anybody's familiar with the governor on a Maytag 72, it looks exactly the same. Actually, I'll pull it out here if it's. I don't know if I tightened it. No, I didn't. There you go. So the throttle is a like a slide valve. So when you move that back and forth, it either opens or closes the aperture or the venturi uh, of the carburetor. So it's it's a little bit finicky. I mean, th these work pretty well in a Model Y Briggs, but uh, here it needs a little bit of uh, fine tuning yet. So we're still working on it. Between this and uh, and the mixture adjustment, we'll get it right. Yeah. So uh, that, that, but we're happy really, with it runs. Yeah, it's really this. Like that's only the second run. Right. So, you know, it's uh, we're, we're happy with that for sure. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. So there you go. You guys waited two years for it, and uh, that's what it is. Now all we have to do is uh, I got to build a a little mounting cart for it, and uh, a little carburetor hat, and it's uh, ready for the shows. That way we can hide the the electronics and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was good. I'm happy with that. You happy with that? I'm happy with that. All right. Me and Mike are happy with that. So now it all matters is you happy with that? I'm happy. With He's that. happy with that. That's all that matters. All right. Like I said, I got I got to thank these guys for helping me build this because uh, each one of us has our own specialty, and without, you know, it would have taken four years. So. All right. You guys say enough of this. Enough of this. Enough of this. Enough of this.